Hello, this is Sarah V, and today I am going to be finishing up, or at least trying to attempt to finish up a nice bit of them, three years of sewing projects that have been sitting abandoned. Some of them are more recent, some of them are from when I was 17, so... There might be some background noise because there is construction going on upstairs, but I have no control of that. It might be like that for the next couple. So I apologize in advance. So I think I am just going to organize this pile a little bit. It's a little bad. Let me, let me show you. It's the whole table. You see better now? Let me smooth her down. Ow. Let's try that. That's crooked. Poo. Okay. Who wants to be first? The oldest one here is her. I don't know if I'll get to this and this. I don't know if it still fits or not, but what is, why is this even in there? I don't know. St. Patrick's Day fabric. Has nothing to do with what's in here. Um, I started making some kind of like little doublet jacket from, um, Patterns of Fashion during COVID back in 2020. I never finished it. I'm gonna put this flannel on the inside. Then it's just out of some like, it's like, it's, it's a knit wool, let's be real here. I was 17, so. Um, choices were made. I got most of it done. I just needed to put the lining in with the sleeves, put the collar on, and put all of the little little flappy bits on the bottom and I just took it to college I think for two years and I never finished it. Whew. I think the next one would either be this dress that I started freshman year of college and never finished or this like jumper dress. It's like one of those little overall dresses that go here and have the little straps. And um, I think I started that whenever I was on Christmas break for college. And then I just proceeded to take it back to college for the next two and a half years. And it's collected a bunch of like dust and dirt and stuff. So that one's really good. That one, I was using this mail order pattern, 9281. So there's that. Straps need made, they need sewn up, and then I need to insert them into the, between the facing. And the wool I used was quite too thick for this, so it's quite heavy. It's probably a, like a coating felt, but it's fine. And then this one I started making in college, freshman year, probably the second half. So the, the black wool jumper is probably slightly older. But this one, I thought I was being like all nifty. I used Simplicity 7765. I used the jumper dress for it. Except instead of using the whole dress, I was like, oh, well, I'll use it for a bodice and then I'll put a skirt on it. And it's wide enough at the bottom that I can put, that I can just slip it over my head without a zipper. But I'm thinking that, because it's quite wide. I could put some tabs at the side and some buttons and then just button it to whatever size I would like it to be. 
I'm just going to gather the skirt on that. That was the idea. It's not going to be super gathered, but then I cut out some little bias pockets that I have to figure out where they go. Because they're I just kind of was like, wow, I'll just do this. But then I abandoned it, of course. And I was thinking maybe a tie, but I barely have any scraps left, so that's not an option. But I do have enough to make little tats, so we'll see about that. This one definitely needs to get done because I feel really guilty about it. It was my mother's Christmas present from two years ago. I promised her I would finish it, and then I was going to try to finish it before I got married, but then I made a bunch of clothes for my honeymoon and my wedding dress, and then it didn't get done. So she knows about it. I showed her it because I felt bad, but it's just little doggy purse, little crossbody doggy purse, and I used a pattern, sorry for the crinkling, pattern from Etsy from Simply Cherubia. Now we're more to more recent stuff. Of course I have other projects. But I don't feel like tackling those at all yet. Some of them aren't for this season. Or I just don't have the pattern here but it's at my parents' house and I just haven't done anything with it. So Some of these are more easy. Have the skirt that I made. I think also during winter break freshman year of college and then it got too tight on me so I started taking it out yesterday and then I didn't finish it I have to add on some waistband but I had enough room in the back to take it out so this one will be easy I just have to add more waistband and finish the waistband that'll be done just a little brown corduroy skirt with the fabric from fabric mart I also have the skirt that needs taken out, which I, it was just eased in a lot and then it got too tight. So I just took it out and then it fit perfectly. So I just have to finish the waistband on this one too. It is plaid corduroy. I got it at Fabric Mart and I love it. It reminds me of like butterscotch. So I'll be excited to wear that again whenever it's done, but it has to be done or I cannot wear it. Now we're starting to get on to this year. This was a dust ruffle on a bed with these pillowcases and the pillowcases were quite large and I was able to cut out a whole skirt and a vest. The skirt needs let out but it has these cool little pockets. Um, yeah, so that's basically that. So I just have to let that out and re-put the waistband on and it should be fine. And this one, yes, this one is eased in too, so I might just unease it and it'll probably be fine. This waistband is completely machine sewn on and I never finished the closure. So there's that. That was probably in like February. I was procrastinating making my wedding dress because it was like a million layers of tulle. Then the vest kept fussing with the vest because it wasn't fitting right. So I just abandoned it. But I think I need to take, as it's pinned, it seems I need to take it in in the back for the waist. I'll have to try it on to see if it fits in the waist still or if it needs let out. We'll see. But then I was just going to Line with this scrap puppy fabric I had. So there's that. And that one's not too hard. It's just basically redoing a waistband to hem and then finishing the vest. Ow! That had a pin in it. And then while I was in vest mode, I have a bunch of other vests I wanted to make, but I didn't get to them. And I was trying to get the pattern just right, so I just be so I'd just be able to whip up a bunch of vests. Cut up. The pattern for these vests is 
Butterick 9474. This is my great grandma's sewing pattern. And what view is this? I copied it out and altered the pattern. So. And then because of how the last one I showed you was too big at the top of the back, I altered the pattern and cut this one out and I was gonna test it out to see if that would fix all my problems. And then I never made it up. But this, I got a remnant at Joanne, it was one yard. And I was able to cut out this vest and I have a skirt that's already made in this plaid. So I figured that'd be cute. But I might have to cut it in two pieces in the back if I do this alteration, which I didn't do here. I kind of finagled it on the fabric, which was a pain. And it might not turn out good, so we'll see. Oh, oh I was checking to see what I used. A. So that was just going to be like oh, a little plaid vest there. I think the other one's probably A too. And then I'm just going to cut out a striped vest. I never cut out the lining for it. This one looks like it is C. No? It is D. But only I only had enough striped fabric for the back. I used the leftover striped fabric from my dress that I made to go to Beetlejuice. But the back is just black. And I took it in in the sides. And then I just never did anything else with it. So two vests there. I had a whole sheet in my sketchbook with the different vests I wanted to make with the pieces of fabric I had. I'll probably get to that later in the year and try to complete all of those. So I have a bunch of delightful vests. Is that all of them? No, that is not all of them. I have, I have one more. Let me get the other pillow. I, cut, I started these, I think in July, after I first got married. When I came back from our honeymoon, I was like, I want to make mushroom pillows. So I started making mushroom pillows. And then partway through, I needed needles so that I could fit it the whole way through. Because they're plump. And then... I didn't end up getting the needles for a couple more weeks, so yeah, and then I just didn't finish them for a while. So I have one mushroom pillow, but I do not have the other one. The other one, I have the top, I have the other side, which is going to be like the little gills. It's like kind of like the wood grain fabric that I just have gathered up. I have all the gathering stitches in it. So those need gathered into this. And then I need to put the pillow in. And then sew this hole up. I was dumb and didn't put seam allowance there, so I just kind of have to sew it as tight as I can. And then put the, the buttons on, which I have the buttons made, but I haven't done anything with them. So I have this pillow that's just been sitting here for like three months. And it would be nice for my couch to be nice and symmetrical and cute. And also for this to stop living behind this machine here. So it's fine. So that is all of the projects that I have right now. So I guess we'll start with one. Maybe, should I, oh, what should I start with? Well, maybe I'll put them in order of priority or easiness. We'll see. Things that need more work, things that need less work. This is easy. Priority-wise, I should finish my mother's little puppy bag before Christmas because I'm obviously not going to give it to her for Christmas because it already was a Christmas present. So I just have to finish it and give it to her and stop being a weasel about it. 
I didn't mean for this to happen. Oh, these are easy. These skirts, quick and easy. But the very least, I think I should, in this video, at least get done. Oh, I forgot one. I cut out this shirt for my husband, and I never finished it. So, I'll have to finish that too. But, I think even if I just finish the purse, the two skirts, and the pillow, I think that will be a really good start. And maybe I'll make a part two and try to tackle the rest of it, perhaps, now that I've explained this for like a million years. So, I guess I have to actually start now. I was wrong. The brand, the person I got it from was not Cherubia. The purse is the Cherubia Modest Crossbody Bag. And they don't know where it's from. Maybe I'll look it up later, and then we'll know, but we'll see. I don't know where I left off. I think it was... And I did... I think I altered this so I could put this in. It is a gusset for the bottom, so it can be plumper at the bottom. But the thing that was getting me was the zipper. And I've never made a purse with hardware before. This is the back and the lining. This is the front. See, all I need to do is put this zipper in. Uh, and I think I also maybe made it wider. I don't remember. Yeah, I did. I think I made it like an inch wider. Size, 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 size. I got these to put the straps on, but I don't know how to attach how I'm going to attach these to the actual purse. Oh, that's another thing that got me, and I was just kind of like, oh, how am I going to do this? So that's what they had at Joanne when I was. I think 18, I think I was 18 when I started this. 18 or 19. I think I shall start with something less intimidating, like perhaps this pillow. It will be quite easy, but you know how it is. One hopes. Procrastination nation. You know, that was quite useless because it, quite frankly, it needs, it needs iron quite badly. And if I gather it, then I can never get those wrinkles out. So I guess I'll have to wait for my iron to heat up. It'll be, and that'll be about like 10 to 15 minutes. So I guess I'll do the skirts. I am currently pinning the inside of the waistband on the plaid skirt closed, followed by pinning the extra waistband onto the plain skirt. I can now sew the waistband on and sew the underlap up. After turning out the underlap, I can now do all of the hand sewing for the skirts.
After all of those hand sewing shenanigans, I can gather the bottom of the pillow onto the top and then sew them together, leaving an opening to insert the pillow. I have left one fourth of the pillow open to squeeze it in, and that was perfectly fine. Now I can sew it shut and gather the hole up in the center and sew it closed before compressing the center with thread in a very long needle in which afterwards I can sew the buttons on. This is how my pillows turned out. I'm quite happy to have two on my couch now. I think they turned out very cute. This video ended up a little bit long, so I ended up not finishing the purse in this one. But in part two, I would like to finish the purse, the black jumper dress, and that little plaid dress. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you would like to see more sewing content, please subscribe. If you would like to see what I'm up to day to day, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Sarah V. Sews Vintage. Thank you again for watching, and see you next time.